Dear, dear colleagues, so nice to have you all here. And um, look, um, we were thinking since the last day, uh, since the last assembly, that uh, we should put again, or we should put the recognition of the profession on the top of the agenda. And the idea was to involve you all in the discussion, and especially to update you about the uh, current uh, processes or the past processes and the future processes uh, on related to the recognition of the profession. And for that, we have, we thought it's the best we do um, a first webinar as a kind of information. What is the situation we have today? Where is, where are we, do, where do we stand? and share some experiences from national associations also, so that uh, we can um, start a kind of movement in, um, in Europe among the national delegations. And um, okay, it is, please understand this webinar as a kind of motivation to all the national delegations and all the national associations where the profession is uh, still not recognized. And there are still a lot of um, countries where the profession is not recognized. So, um, as you know, only 13 countries in Europe have the profession recognized, and there is, um, yes, um, uh, there is still some work to be done. Um, so, my first uh, message here is uh, to present you the today's program. We have uh, from Katerina or. Uh, President here, um, the, she will present us the general context in Europe and the professional survey she has done in the last, uh, uh, last year. Then uh, we will have uh, Fritz Ovec. He will update us with the PQD, the professional qualification directive and the context, the overall context of the recognition. And um, based on that, uh, some achievements from national associations from the Czech Republic and from France and um, after that, the, this is the, 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 the vision, right? This is the, the way forward with the common training framework. We will receive some input uh, on the current work um, done um, with the Innerland project. And this will be, uh, and I hope that after all these presentations, we will have a lot of time for discussions, questions, remarks, etc. And um, I hope that I know that you some of you prepared already questions and uh, maybe the, the presentations um, will already some somehow clarify uh, some topics you would like to ask or you would like to 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 answer uh, to, to to question. So I would like to invite now uh, Katerina for, to for you to do your presentation. Katerina so that um, we can get this overview about the survey and the professional context. Thank you. Thank you, Didier, and thank you very much. Welcome you all in this first um, workshop of on professional practice. Uh, this was actually, as Didier said, a good motivation uh, for you all, but basically it became as a need uh, in order to exchange ideas and to start networking on the national level. So let me start sharing my screen. I hope you can all see uh, my screen now. Okay, thank you, DJ. So my purpose today is just to uh, briefly present you a general overview of what is happening in Europe based on the professional survey that it was conducted last year and to see how we can proceed from now on. And of course, from our colleagues, uh, to see how we can all work together. Starting from uh, IFLA Europe, um, just putting these messages because I find they're very well connected with, with what I'm going to say uh, on the next pages is that as IFLA Europe is a non-governmental organization, basically it aims to defend the profession and to recognize the excellent on professional training courses, but as well to influence and enhance the quality on the landscape. When EFLA was formed, the idea was basically to establish a common base for a mainstream professional training on landscape architects 
and the profession of landscape architect is till now recognized worldwide by UNESCO, by the International Labour Office and in many European countries. But as Didier already said, there are already some countries and a lot I can say that there are still the profession is not recognized, neither the title. The old profession, and I'm just uh, putting that uh, from us, it was uh, in ELO, in the International Labour Organization, has been modified and has been improved and this new definition has already been uh, uh, submitted by uh, IFLA, uh, and we are still ex uh, waiting for the acceptance, official acceptance by ILO. But basically, I'm putting that because they define exactly that landscape architects, apart from plan design and manage natural, rural, and built environments. And we focus basically, apart from aesthetics, we focus on the subject of sustainability, of quality of health of landscape, collective memory, heritage, culture, and territorial justice. Another issue that this definition also focusing is that we're trying to cooperate with other disciplines and we can be interact with other disciplines as well as with natural and cultural ecosystems. And we're also dealing with all the matters of climate change and the stability of ecosystem and economic improvements, of course, for the community health and welfare. All these are issues that, of course, as IFLA Europe will try to, uh, to get involved in it and uh, show how what our profession can be done. So by this survey that was done by myself, uh, Ursula, first Britannic, our uh, former vice, the former uh, secretary general, and of course with the assistance of uh, Diana Kules, who our uh, secretary general now, and also Fritz also contributed on this one, Fritz Oweg. Uh, we try to understand what is the state of the profession, uh, what are the problems, what are the process of the regulations for the countries that are already regulated the profession, and if there are any problems on mobility as they are requested by the, the European Commission Directorate General for internal market industry, entrepreneurship, and SMEs. This is, this is for the people that do not know, this is the directorate that we are uh, working with, or we are basically trying to communicate if we want to uh, make our profession recognized at European level. And this is actually, uh, if you go to the European Commission, there is a database with the countries that are regulated at European level. And this, the countries that are still now regulated are Czech Republic, France, Germany, Hungary, Iceland, Italy, Luxembourg, Netherlands, Slovakia, Slovenia, Switzerland, the part of Geneva, and United Kingdom. Some other, as we've been working, uh, several definition came, and therefore I'm giving you in order to try to understand some of them. When we're talking about basically accreditation, we're focusing in a system of monitoring and reviewing basically the tertiary education and dealing with problems of institution. When talking about recognition, the recognition of professional qualification, basically it allows the beneficiaries to get access of what the state means for the profession. And when we're talking about regulation, basically we're focusing on the legislative uh, issue of the profession. And I hope the, uh, the colleagues that will give more information about that in the afterwards. So what we're trying to do to see where the profession is recognized and regulated. And so far from the 34 countries, we got 31 that they have replied in this survey. And I'm just giving you a very brief situation. This is the map as it is still now of the profession that they're regulated, non-regulated at European level and regulated on national level. So the, the countries that are really non regulated at European level, or the profession, sorry, is not regulated, is Belgium, Bulgaria, Croatia, Denmark, Finland, Greece, Ireland, Latvia, Lithuania, Poland, Portugal, Spain, Sweden, Norway, Russia, Ukraine, Belarus. And then the countries where the profession till now, we have 13 countries where the profession is regulated at uh, European level, are France, Czech Republic, Germany, Hungary, Italy, Luxembourg, Slovakia, Slovenia, Netherlands, 
United Kingdom, Iceland, Switzerland, the part of Geneva and Austria. And we have some countries that are regulated at national level, not in EU sense, Austria, Estonia, Israel, Serbia, Switzerland, and Turkey. So what, what was interested from this survey to find out that what's happening with the laws? And I'm just giving you a very brief examples on some countries that the profession is regulated. For example, in France, they were reclaiming that laws for reclaiming biodiversity, nature, and landscape, basically they will recognize the title of landscape architect in this way. Or introducing the title of landscape architect in the European Commission database was also a big step for them, as well the mandatory intervention of landscape architect on any architectural landscape architectural project. Other countries also, through their building laws or indirect laws, basically dealing with planning or heritage or environmental impact assessment and so on, they were introducing also uh, the uh, idea of landscape architects' uh, tasks and uh, how important it is for uh, these projects. The thing with the countries where a profession is not regulated, you can all understand that it's a bit more uh, difficult, but however, I have highlighted the uh, attempt of some countries, for example, in Portugal, although it's not recognized the profession, the legislation established the services provided by the architects and landscape architect in the urbanism or landscape planning. In Romania, for example, there are indirect law that shape the current law of landscape architect. In Finland, in Finland they, they have several binding, binding processes on governmental or regional level, or municipal level, defining when there are landscape design and special planning projects, who is going to do. So when we've been asking, and this was very interesting from now on to understand, which were the procedure and actions from the countries where the profession was regulated that was taken in order the profession to be established, the most popular answer that they were given, basically they are focusing, as you can understand, either on uh, enshrining in the architect's law or even to hold a degree, a master degree plus two years of professional experience, or even to have a license or to have a strong level of political support. I'm just giving you the most popular answer. And of course, when we were asking which were the reason, the reason for good, better or reasonable professional situation in your country, meaning again for the country where the profession is regulated, the most popular answers they were that they had a common basis training, that the social they have gained a social appreciation as landscape architects, that they were trying to protect and they were protecting the professional co competency of landscape architects. And of course, they were gaining also better cooperation with architects and urban planners. These are some of the uh, registration in a chamber also, some of the answers. And the thing is for the countries where the profession is not regulated, the main reasons for the unsatisfactory professional situation, it was given that the leadership on project by architect, it was one, and that the low recognition of landscape architects. And basically another issue was the absence of legal framework for landscape architects tasks, as well as the confusion with gardeners and other familiar disciplines, engineers, agronomists, and foresters. And the, the interesting thing is when we have been asking about when, in which task a landscape architect is involved, uh, the people that they were coming from uh, countries where the profession is regulated, they were giving as is natural, more clear answers. And uh, for example, it was very easy to, uh, how to say that, to classify uh, in project planning, project management planning and project coordination. And they were giving more details, of course, in which or among these classes, a landscape architect is involved. Of course, they were giving a big spectrum of tasks. Whereas the countries that the profession was not regulated, their answer were focusing mostly on the way of how they've been employed, either in national level, regional level, and so on, or that they were mostly as counseling in several projects, 
were that they, they, they basically they were participating in indisciplinary teams. So the vast majority of countries is, is that they define that the basis of everything is education, as you can understand, being a member of an association, passing a professional exam and obtain, obtaining a license. But the thing, when we have been asked them about the status of mobility, uh, we didn't really got severe problems as we were expected. And especially for the non-regulated countries, of course, there are no extra procedure. So since on these countries, the engineer signature is obligatory in all the project, it was natural that the problems that a local landscape architect is facing, the same it happens for a foreigner. Of course, has extra uh, for foreigner has extra uh, obstacles such as language or uh, technical to know technical standards and so on. But in countries where the profession is regulated, if they can recognize the title in the chamber, it was uh, the first step. And then uh, the uh, foreigner has to face, of course, all the requir uh, requirements regarding citizenship or certificate of diploma, business permit, and so on. So basically, the, the, the answer, if the, the profession is in a good state or in danger, we, uh, the, most, the majority, they didn't find any danger in the profession. And on one other issue, it was that in most countries, there is, again, a variety of the way they get the, the speed of getting them recognized. And we saw some countries like Serbia, Estonia, and Turkey, they, they, they were really in a good stage of uh, regulating and they have regulated the profession. And of course, in some other countries, the landscape architecture is still poorly recognized, and especially the title. So this is an other issue that IFLA Europe can also uh, see for further actions how to do that. Because as, as I already said, the scope of task is quite big. And sometimes it, create, it creates confusion with especially on the matter of competency with other professions. So basically what is really gained from this survey that a clear definition of the title is needed, a very clear description of the task of landscape architect is needed, definitely a good education system. And also it proved that registration is in the chamber is imperative as well as the ability to work abroad also it is, uh, it's uh, it's really important if you can register in a chamber. But the most obstacles really, uh, they couldn't appear as a big one because as you can understand, most landscape ar architects work in a big, big firms with other disciplines. And sometimes they're not only them that they have to uh, take a project, it's a big team. So as I see a common roadmap for further activities, and here it's the colleagues that can elaborate further. Uh, after our meeting with the DG Grows, the, the officers from the DG Grow, it came that is important a common training framework. And it, we're very lucky that we have Inland project at this time being that is running. And there uh, the, are colleagues that are just working on that because this is really imperative. Another issue that they were asking, but I think probably it's a bit, it's quite difficult, is that national associations should start sending complaints to European Commission. You can see the link here. But the complaints, as it was said to us, the Commission is not obliged to react in every case. Basically, they need a lot of cases. And most of the times, what they do, they go back to the national authority and ask them what's happening and so on. So there is a huge work that should be done also at the national level in each country should do it. Another issue that can be really uh, that they were insisting on us, but again, it's mostly on national level, but we can see how we can also help on this, is to investigate the directive on proportionality test before really adoption any new regulation. Basically, what means by that, that for any regulation, each member state before a new regulation should do an assessment, should do an assessment and should, for example, in our case, landscape architects, we should justify that according to their framework, then they should explain that any new measure really does not contradict 
with us is not restrictive and is not restrictive on the case of mobility and our situation in the market. So to conclude, this is why it's very important. We found out it's very important to enhance the network in collaboration among national associations. This is why we have been launching this uh, workshop today. And it's very important from now on to work on that. So uh, a, last, a last thing, uh, we have been uh, starting also with uh, Mike Oldman, who has started some years ago uh, this report on landscape and human rights to start investigating how we can formulate a strategy and elaborate that in also in the European Commission level and see how can we uh, start working and discussing about that, especially on landscape and uh, landscape architects professionals. So thank you very much. I hope I didn't get enough of your time and uh, I'm definitely after that, we can have the chance to discuss more Excellent. than that. Thank you very much, Katerina. And especially the, your last slide is very important, talking about the directive, the conditions of mobility in Europe and also the common training framework. Hmm? Um, thank you, Salat. And um, now I would like to invite uh, Fritz Aubeck to present the um, current status of the uh, PQD, the directive, and or explain what is the directive, and the, what's about the directive, and especially the context of recognition. And um, Fritz, if you can share your screen, that would be fantastic. Yes. yes. Uh, Thank you. What Daniela is doing it for me. Do you hear ah, me? Excellent. Yes, yes, please. Yes. Uh, yes, uh, Katharina uh, told already uh, uh, in the first part a lot of matters uh, which are related to the PQD, so uh, it is uh, sometimes double, yes, but uh, uh, it doesn't matter, I think. So um, I'm dealing with the PQD since uh, 2010. Uh, next slide. And uh, there are three questions uh, uh, which are related to the PQD. So in the PQD, as a professional qualifications uh, directive, the profession, profession must be defined. So uh, Katharina already showed the new and the existing definition. Uh, what is our profession? It's, it, it's necessary that we I have a clear understanding of the contents and what we are doing. Where is our profession defined? And the third question, by whom is our profession regulated and recognized? And I think uh, Katharina showed it already on one slide. It's very important that we uh, have a clear understanding of this difference between regulation and recognition and also recognition on uh, the level of the nation or recognition on the level of the uh, European Union. Next slide. Yes, uh, you see, this is uh, the only, the only uh, what I know worldwide definition is in the International Labor Organization in the so-called ISCO, International Standard Classification of Occupations, and I feel it's not a recognition, it's a defining, it's, it's a definition of the uh, profession. And in uh, chapter 2162, the uh, uh, definition of landscape architects is defined. Is, this is a text from 2008. And now, uh, please, the next one. Uh, Katharina showed already. And you see uh, that, uh, I don't uh, read it again, because Katarina did it, that uh, this is a quite a different understanding now, and uh, our profession has evolved and has a much wider context than in the existing ISCO it is uh, in still now. So next slide. We made IFLA world made this definition in close cooperation with ILO. And the definition you uh, read on the uh, last slide uh, is was voted at the IFLA World Council in 2020. And you see on this page also from A to uh, H, 
the task of the landscape architects. This is also what the architects have at the beginning of their paragraph in the Pico D that say define the profession and say uh, define the task of the profession. So this is necessary. So why is it not now uh, in, 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 in action? Uh, the problem is that uh, the ELO does uh, uh, makes a revision of uh, the uh, SISCO not every year, but every 20 years. So the next uh, new uh, version will be end of the 20s. We got the allowance that uh, the landscape architects can change their definition. And uh, we worked out the definition in close cooperation with ELO, but it's still not the official because the official new definition will be in the new ISCO, which will be in three or five, four years. So we are still in contact with ELO and uh, will uh, look. So if La World decided that we don't wait until this time, but we uh, bring out this new definition now. And there is already, there are translation in several languages on the IFLA website, you can see. And uh, I uh, encourage you that you use this new definition in your national context and national association and universities should use it and spread it because this is a, a new understanding of our profession. Perhaps uh, you have some uh, proposal to change and modify it. Uh, we can discuss it uh, in the next years. So the next um, slide. So what is the Pico D? The PQD is the Professional Qualifications Directive and was set up in 2005 and modified in 2013 and later there were small modifications. So the important version is from 2014. PQD defines the regulation and the recognition of professions in the European Union with what is the main target of this PQD to get easier recognition. The best is automatic recognition. This means that you uh, are not obliged to do a recognition of your profession in, if you go, go to another country and more mobility of professions between the member states. So that's, that's the background. So next slide. Uh, so look, let's look first to the regulation. So regulation is in uh, the sense of the European Union, a precondition that the profession can be inside the regulation of PQD. If you are not a regulated profession, you can not be inside PQD. And uh, in article three, there are the definitions of what uh, are important matters for to be a regulated uh, profession. I will not read this long text. If you go to the next slide, please. Uh, there you will see the essential requirements for a regulated profession. First, is the title of the profession reserved to persons holding a given qualification? So important is that it is related the title with a qualification. Is a state register for landscape architects existing also based on qualification and what qualification? A state register alone, which is not based on a qualification, it's not enough. Are there reserved activities for the profession? And is a specific qualification required to exercise reserved activities? These points have not to be fulfilled altogether. So it is open if you fulfill one or two of these uh, conditions, uh, it can be enough. So, uh, and then you have in the PQD, we will see later on that 
at least one third of the EU, EU member states have to be regulated to be able to use PQE for the process to reach recognition by the European Union, not recognition by the national uh, government. Since you have to divide recognition on national level and recognition on European level. So this is related to the European level. So uh, you see here's a link downstairs. And if you go to the next slide, we will have the same uh, slide uh, Katarina showed. And I will only re, um, explain something, what are the categories. You see the name of the regulated profession. And if you look to these uh, names, then you don't see everywhere landscape architects. For example, in Italy, it's the name Paisagista. So uh, this means that landscape architect is an international name, but it can be different in the use on national level. Then you have the next two columns, country and regions. Uh, if you look down to Switzerland, then you see there is only the region of Geneva uh, inside this uh, regulation. Uh, in the other countries, we have all regions, but it is possible that also not the whole country is inside, but it can be that also a region is inside. And then you see on the right side, the recognition under the uh, directive, which is the Pico D. This is uh, that we are all without uh, Luxembourg, I don't know exactly what it means, but we are in the general system of recognition. We are not inside the PQD. We are belonging to the general system of recognition. This is what we want to change and we want to get to the automatic recognition. Next slide, please. So, uh, very important for regulation is the title. You heard it already. But we have a very different situation. We have uh, countries where the title is protected and a state registration is obligatory. But we have under other countries where the title is protected and we have no state record registration. Then we have uh, countries where the title is not protected, but allowed. Everybody can, can use it. And uh, until uh, some years ago, we had a France where landscape architects were not even allowed to call themselves so because the term architects was reserved for the building architects. So we have very different situation. Next slide. Uh, the same is uh, with uh, chambers. We have, uh, which is related to the state register. We have countries with chamber and regulation and where the state register is made by the chamber. We have countries where the landscape architects are not in a chamber and not regulated. Also in the country exists a chamber for architects. Uh, we have countries without chambers and no regulations, that's especially in Northern Europe, uh, Denmark, Norway, Sweden, Finland, they have no uh, chamber system. They say we don't need it and they will never get it. But also the title is there not protected. So, uh, conditions for practice are in those countries very positive because our profession has a, a high, uh, high value in the politics and in the society. Uh, in other parts of Europe, we have problematic conditions uh, with the same ground conditions. So next slide, please. So you saw already this uh, picture from Katarina and it shows again 
uh, say countries with regulation, it's in blue. With regulation on national level, I will explain to you. So, for example, in Austria, say on Austria, the landscape architects belong to uh, the engineers. Uh, Karl Grimm is, uh, I see, I saw you first, is there. You correct me if I say something wrong. And uh, Karl uh, asked the government, and they say, so engineers are regulated and we will not do a separate regulation for uh, the landscape architects, you are inside the engineers. So uh, this means that the landscape architects are regulated, but not in the sense of Europe because they are not in the list. They are uh, integrated in the list of engineers. So next slide, please. So coming again to the uh, definitions of the PQD, uh, we talked now about regulation and now recognition. PQD has two different systems. The automatic recognition, only those professions which are in the PQD with a paragraph, with an article, also the architects, I have the article 46, uh, are inside and they have in the attachment a uh, list of uh, the education, uh, the universities, and uh, what they are teaching and the profession is automatic recognized in all European countries and you can practice and have mobility without going to a, uh, to a national uh, administration. Uh, this, uh, when uh, we talked about this uh, new PQD in 2013 14, as, uh, it was clear during this process yeah, that it will never happen again, that every, any profession will get a new article. So it's over. So to reach the same status, like the architects, we must can get automatic recognition on basis of a so-called common training framework. It's defined in Article 49A. So it is not only for landscape architects, it's, it's the possibility to uh, get automatic recognition and also other professions uh, try it. Nobody got it until now. So, and all other professions are outside the PQD. So you saw in the list that the uh, landscape architects uh, belong to the general system of recognition. This means that we have to be proved individual to be recognized in any other country. So if you are going from, uh, from Germany to, to France or to Czechia, you have to ask uh, again, the administration to get the allowance and the recognition. Uh, this is uh, what we don't like. Next slide. For uh, the profession of landscape architect, therefore the article 49A is very important. And if you look into the PQD, there is a chapter 3A, automatic recognition on the basis of common training principles and uh, it's Article 49A, Common Training from Framework. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, there is first a definition, what is a Common Training Framework? Uh, Cherion will, and, and Gintas will perhaps say afterwards in the project uh, Inoland that uh, this is uh, a very <laughs> open understanding and we have only in the text uh, written said it means a common set of the minimum knowledge, skills, and competences necessary for the pursuit of a specific profession. Quintas uh, 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 um, tries to fill this together with the partners and to set up a common training framework for landscape architects. So next slide. So there are uh, in total seven, seven preconditions uh, which are written in the PQD 
you have to fulfill if you want to go this way. So the first uh, 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 condition is that it enables more professional to move across the member st uh, states. Uh, Katharina showed it, uh, said uh, it can be, uh, uh, it can be got it to say the news to the European Commission, but the European Commission is very critical. Uh, you need really a lot, a lot of them, not two or three or five or ten. You need more, uh, really a lot. Otherwise, they will say, "Oh, that's not so important. Why do you, why do you make such a, a problem with this?" So the uh, other thing is fulfilled. Uh, the common training framework we are applying is that the uh, uh, profession is regulated in at least one third of the member state. It is meanwhile. But I want to say you in 2014, when we went first time to the commission, it was not the case. There were only seven or eight countries. And it is a, a, a success of IFLA Europe said uh, the, uh, more professional associations got this regulation and this can, can be only done on national level. We can not do it on European level. So every national association who is not regulated must try to get the regulation with their uh, national uh, authorities. Uh, Next slide. Fritz, can you come to an end? Yes, it's, uh, I'm Thank you. just at the end. Uh, so the common framework uh, uh, shall be based on the levels EQF. Uh, I will not uh, uh, automatic recognition. We can go on, so we make it a little bit. Uh, uh, the important thing is that we have seven preconditions uh, which have to be fulfilled by the profession. Uh, otherwise, it's not possible to, uh, to, do, uh, to go by this. So the next. So the last two slides. Uh, my, my interpretation is that we will have not uh, soon automatic recognition, but we are on the way to get it. So we need more countries with a regulated profession. And this is the task of the national associations. We need a common training framework, which is developed in the project Innoland. And we uh, have to, the CTF to be accepted by national governments and the EU commission. This is a task for the next years. <clears throat> So regulation and recognition are not essential precondition for a successful profession on national level. If you look to the Northern Europe, they don't have it and it works. So it depends also uh, on the value of landscape architects in society and politics, which has to be high and the relation to the buildings architects has to be cooperative. And this is very different in the countries in Europe. Last slide. Uh, in countries with chambers, landscape architects should be inside. In the well-developed countries with chambers, all sorts of architects should be in one chamber. Building architects, landscape architects, urban planners, interior architects. This is not the case now. And uh, we need to uh, increase the lobby work and professional politics. Uh, universities and associations should work on national level, European bodies can assist and only act on European level, but uh, it's really a task which has also to be done on the national level. Last slide. Thank you for your attention. And as the picture shows, we have to, to uh, be on the rope together. Thank you very much. Thank you, Fritz. This is an excellent picture for the, <laughs> for the all efforts we have to do all together. Um, I think it's a very nice. Um, uh, thank you for this uh, overview. And I think this is very helpful, although very technical. Huh? But uh, I'm sure that um, we will have the questions uh, uh, answered uh, later on. 
Um, and you mentioned also that um, we have to be more active on the national level. So yes. we need more countries on the national level active and to be recognized, etc. Re regulated, 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 regulated. Sorry, regulated, not recognized. Not regu right. Regulated. Yeah. And we have uh, with us, we have two countries who um, and the countries would like to share with us their um, work and how they achieved the um, to be um, um, to be <laughs> sorry, it, it, regulated it, it, <laughs> regulated be. on European level if they can be recognized on national levels that's yes. another question okay <laughs> and we have uh, here with us we have uh, the Czech Republic and uh, Jana maybe Jana you can you would like to share with us your experience because uh, we saw that um, your country is on the list of the European Commission and okay. then after that we have uh, the France because uh, they have exactly achieved the same uh, process the, pr the same procedure I don't know if you have 10 minutes to share us the your experience it would be nice yeah okay hello everybody can you Thank hear you, me Anna. yes can you see the screen not yet okay it's running rolling excellent very okay. good <clears throat> okay uh, as, uh i must say that i thank you very much to fritz for this uh, uh, very nice view of of the aim why all all the effort is going on and i think it's very important and i must say that uh, if uh, there is no ifla there would, wouldn't be any change in the european recognition of the profession in, from Czech, Czech Republic because we are registered in, in a chamber of the architects, but they of course don't care for our profession. So I will just briefly uh, run through this uh, article and so on. And I want to introduce very briefly our association, uh, which is a small NGO and we have only 50 members, but uh, uh, I must say that we, we do a lot of work and I'm quite proud of that uh, uh, the, the, of the of, of what we would be what of the result that we are now uh, listed in the regulated professions of Europe so it's just our small country in Europe and the map which uh, Fritz and uh, Katarina were showing and I just wanted to point again like like Fritz that no regulation does need to uh, to mean that there is a low respect or le low level of the profession. But of course, there are some some countries where the uh, respect and level is not uh, is maybe or I mean, especially the respect is not is not very good. <clears throat> so uh, who does the recognition on our national level? It's a ministry of education and I must say that all the process of achieving to be listed in on European level reminds me that we are in Kafka country <laughs> because it was <laughs> really something. You can see that we are in on national level uh, when, you, when you put to the, to the mini, uh, when you go to ministry page and you go to the English version, you can see it is the same in Czech, but it is in English for you, that we are listed between the authorized architects because uh, the regulation does uh, Chamber of Architects, which is uh, which uh, gathers all together 4,000 uh, architects, and they have three types of certification. One is architecture, one is special planning, the third is landscape architecture, and there is one very strange uh, certification it's a general architect it's something like uh, like um, architecture terminator who can do everything <clears throat> and uh, uh, for, fortunately uh, there are no many people who can get this title uh, these days because um, of course we, we can understand that especially landscape architecture is very demanding and special profession <clears throat> and when we want to be uh, regulated Let's say it means that we need to have some practice, which is after bachelor studies, five years, master studies plus three years. You can present your portfolio and there is a very hard test in law. 
and I must say it was very difficult for me because memorizing is terrible for me. So it's just the overview. So we are only 5% of the, of the total number of the architects and uh, today it's today's number 221 certified landscape architects but 20 percent of them are in ifla uh, ifla ifla national uh, society which is quite good i think so very briefly what was the history so historically the garden and landscape design and or garden architecture and how was it called has a very long history and people loved gardens and parks and they were very interesting architects, but officially only in 1920, uh, 1992, we were for the first time, uh, we got the first profession name, like certified architect for garden and landscape design. But it was uh, because it was the date when our, uh, our uh, chamber was based. And then it took some years. Um, uh, it uh, and it, it took some years of uh, different names. Uh, different, it, the, the the name of the uh, of the profession was changed. And then uh, very very brief, very uh, very how to say it was very clever to uh, to to precise the name of the of the profession like landscape architect. That's what, what uh, Fritz just said a couple of minutes before. So then after the activity of uh, PQD working group started, we, we came from IFLA meeting the, to a working group uh, of Czech Chamber of the Architects and started to talk about that with them. But nothing was happening like two years and then uh, because there were people who changed in working group. So we started to discuss the problem with them again. And the director of the chamber promised very easily negotiate with the Ministry of Education because she said it would be very easy and very just, just very symbolical step, just formal. But it took two years when we found out that, that they just didn't do anything. No, no, no uh, step. And they were just like promising and doing nothing. So 2018, after we can see three years, <laughs> we started to push the chamber again and the minister again. Then Tony Williams, former president of IFLA, wrote to the chamber and to the ministry, proposed them some help and so on. Then, uh, because it was quite shaming, uh, the president of uh, the chamber started to push with the lawyers of the chamber to the ministry. Then the ministry promised they started the process of notification, but it, so again, next two years. And then after more two years, they uh, announced that they handed the not notification. So again, we can see it is like 2015, 2020, but uh, in the end, luckily in 2021, we were listed in the in the list of regulated profession data database. So we are there. Uh, it doesn't mean that we don't have problems here because uh, with the respect and with the, uh, the with the competencies, because we have new uh, new version of the law, which is uh, regulating our profession together with the architects and they limited our uh, capabilities and uh, and our comp uh, competencies. So it's again, new fight on our national level, but luckily we are in on the European stage. And <clears throat> I added a note uh, to, um, to Fritz, uh, Fritz uh, announcement that we should, we, we should uh, translate the IFLA definition to, the, to check uh, to the national versions. So we just, it is in the process and we will have the certified translation and we will publish it everywhere where we can we can reach it, we can send it. So, and I just wanted to say that we all are landscapes and we all people are landscapes. So let's pray for Ukraine. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Jana. And congratulations for this achievement. This is a, I mean, this can be presented as a success story. Thank you Although, very much. 
Although you, you took, uh, it took uh, 12 years, if I understand well, to uh, longer. Let's say, let's say seven, seven. Seven, seven. But um, um, I mean, fantastic work. And especially, um, I think it's a good idea to have this working group on the PQD and uh, implementing and the dialogue with the ministry. Um, congratulations. Thank you very much. Um, I'm sure there will be some questions in the chat. Uh, but let's listen now to the next uh, country, uh, the French countries, because uh, recently they achieved also um, um, to have the, the profession regulated on the national level and having their landscape architect as a paysagist concepteur. So maybe Nicola is around and yes. would like to share. Maybe Nicola, you can share your experience with us. Yes, I'm looking to... Oh, fuck. Um, excuse me, I've got a problem with my uh, presentation. That's fine. Um, so if you have uh, it's a new, new computer, minutes. so I have to. Yeah, I have to to close. Oh, fuck. Uh, I come back. You will come back. Okay, you will come back. Maybe Jana, yes, we, you will translate the, the the. I think it's a quite important for each. National Association to translate the definition of the landscape architect um, in their own language and to publish it on the website so that uh, it's a kind of understanding like um, uh, Fritz was mentioning before and Katerina also to, and to, to make this visible that um, this uh, new definition is, uh, is there. Everything is okay for now? Yes, yeah. that's fine. Yes. Thank you, Nicola. It's yeah. okay. Excellent. It's in. Okay, great. <clears throat> Excuse me for my bad words. <laughs> no, no, that's fine. Uh, uh, <laughs> okay, so uh, some historical basis. Uh, in 1982, uh, creation of the FFP with two objectives uh, bring together landscape architects and promote the landscapes, and uh, to bring um, together all the actors of the landscape to um, uh, to open the, the debate of uh, uh, geographers, writers, researchers, contractors, and painters. Mm -hmm. And uh, in uh, 1984, the first national landscape conference with a political uh, aspect with the Minister of Environment and Minister of Agriculture. And it was a conference to think upstream the action of the landscape and articulate the, the mean time and space. In 1993, uh, the first landscape law aims to protect, manage, and enhance landscape, whatever they are natural, urban, rural, ordinary, and exceptional. Uh, it's above uh, all planning and urban de development law. In 1996 uh, was the establishment of a procedure for the rehabilitation of a professional because there was two categories of members. Uh, full members, uh, which were graduated, and uh, the other member, which uh, was associate. Uh, uh, Nicola, your presentation yes? is not visible. Oh, okay. What happened? What uh, do you... No, it is visible, Fred. Yes, it is. It is visible. It is visible. Okay. Maybe you have to change your um, in internal in, in internal um, system. It from you talk to me yes. or no, no no move on move on Nicola. Okay. Good. Move on. And uh, uh, with this situation, uh, the situation, Ministry of Equipment, uh, we uh, that was uh, in charge of uh, uh, the landscape um, architect, uh, told us to uh, to make something. For the 70 people uh, were, uh, that uh, were associated. And uh, we st start the habilitation process for these people with uh, a jury of uh, landscape architects, contract contracting authorities, and uh, some uh, institutions. Uh, in the 2000, uh, the Ministry of Culture created a specific chamber for landscape architects uh, within the order of architects. And uh, it was a process that uh, 
take a little bit time and uh, the FFP refused to uh, the monopoly of reservation of activity and uh, the, the project was abandoned by the authorities. In um, After the FFP desired to create a specific qualification office for landscape architect, and uh, it was a lot of, uh, of work, but uh, the project doesn't uh, come to fruition. In the, there is a little some um, time after in 2007, uh, it was the active test for the recognition of the profession. And uh, uh, in the first step was to create uh, the recognition of a title landscape architect. And uh, it was refused by the Ministry of Culture because in France, uh, the term architect and is uh, only for the architect uh, building processing. Uh, so the FFP uh, worked to have uh, one word that was a paysagist conceptor. Uh, with this word, uh, we work with uh, Valor, which is the <coughs> uh, interprofession in France uh, with uh, horticulture, floristry, and landscape architecture. Uh, it was a, a process to uh, have more impact uh, on political. Uh, 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 on political and also have a lot uh, of money to uh, to make uh, the processes uh, effective. Uh, after uh, we work on a referential des bonnes pratiques du paysagiste concepteur uh, with AFNOR. AFNOR is an official organization uh, to um, uh, calibrate all the the stuff of uh, defend the profession of paysagist conceptor, landscape architecture approach with the specificities of the profession uh, and also the professional practices. Uh, in 2012, uh, it was the elaboration of code of ethics, but it's uh, quite the same, but we work with uh, all the, uh, over uh, landscape architect with uh, state until of landscape architect uh, to be effective. In 2050, it was the state diploma of paysagist, the DEP. It's an equivalent of a master degree in Europe and it is established for four schools, uh, Blois, Versailles, Marseille, Bordeaux and Lille. And uh, the FAP is not the direct actor of this elaboration, but it was a, uh, a big step uh, in uh, in the recognition, recognition of the profession. Uh, in 2016, uh, the recognition of the paysagist conceptor uh, was uh, okay with the French state. Um, the law of the 8th <laughs> August 2016 uh, for the reconquest of the biodiversity, nature, and landscape create the title of paysagist conceptor. And the article, uh, the article postulates that only persons holding a diploma issued by an approved training establishment under condition laid down by regulations certifying specific training of a cultural, scientific, and technical nature in landscape architecture may use the title paysagist conceptor in non-professional practice. So the profession was uh, regulated at this time, and uh, we have to. Um, to take, uh, uh, we have to wait for the um, decree of application of uh, this law. And there was uh, some specificities uh, because uh, it was only uh, the four school that I mentioned before that uh, can use the title of paysagist conceptor. And there was a over uh, professional that have to uh, go to a commission to uh, to prove that they can use this title. Uh, the first case was the first case was for the people who were uh, uh, diplomat with uh, the for school and uh, the procedure is not automatic, but they have to 
to uh, to ask to have the uh, ability to use the title. The second case is for people that uh, don't have uh, diplomas or private school diplomas, and uh, uh, they have to prove that they are able to to be a landscape uh, paysagist conceptor. And the first case was for the people that uh, study in uh, foreign countries and want to practice in uh, in France. Uh, with this uh, title of paysagist conceptor, we can now uh, have a law that uh, told about paysagist conceptor. And uh, uh, the first one was uh, in uh, 2018. Uh, allowing a paysagist conceptor in the same way as an architect to sign and development permit. Uh, also, it was uh, uh, in the, uh, excuse me, uh, it was in the territorial engineering competition, previously reserved only for the engineers, and now there is uh, the ability for the paysagist conceptor to, uh, to be at the engineering uh, level. Uh, the next step was in 2019 with the transcri transcription of the title into the European Committee law through registration in the database of profession managed by the European Commission. And uh, for this uh, for this uh, action, we work in uh, between uh, 27 and 18 uh, with the Ministry of Finance. And uh, it was a long and heavy process. And we've got the uh, good help with uh, IFLA Europe president who was uh, Tony Williams that came in Paris at the ministry and uh, we can uh, work on this. Uh, the key points for vacation, uh, excuse me, in October 20, the professional position conceptor appears in the public database of regulated profession uh, within the European Union. And uh, uh, the principle of uh, regulation of a professional title that has been approved by the, by the European Commission. Uh, the next step uh, is, uh, as you say uh, before, that uh, in France, uh, paysagist conceptor is uh, it's uh, re regulated, but uh, the FFP work be, uh, is uh, at the beginning to can use the term arch architect paysagist, landscape architect. And uh, it's the next step for us uh, with all uh, the IFLA help to make this, uh, okay. Okay, it's okay, thank you for your <laughs> attention. Excuse thank me, you. it's a little confused, but uh, we can, uh, I can uh, give you all the PowerPoint to, uh, mm -hmm. Okay. It's a very wise approach indeed, and um, a bit different as the Czech, uh, but uh, we can say also a success story because uh, you were yeah. uh, not um, you, not so much uh, time, I mean, in this period of time, and achieving it as a, as a regulated profession is uh, quite uh, amazing. Thank you, okay. Nicola. Thank, Thank you for this uh, presentation. Um, and now we are moving uh, to the last uh, presentation. This is uh, the common training framework. It has been mentioned several times in the previous presentation. So this is um, the next uh, presenters. We have uh, Hirun and Gintaras. I don't know how you would like to present uh, the results of the uh, inner land work. Mm, Up yeah. to you. Sharon, Sharon is starting we, we agree the that I will start and then... Uh, okay, thank you. So you have 15 minutes, please. Yes. Thank you. Do you see the screen here? Yes, excellent. Okay, that's good. So the, um, we repeat a bit the presentation we gave at the General Assembly. And um, the Innoland project uh, consists of a series of partners from Finland, IFLA Europe, and the Notre the Netherlands. And, uh, university partners in uh, different uh, countries. And this project is aimed at uh, developing this common training framework and also uh, develop standards for quality in uh, landscape education and to uh, develop an exemplar master in landscape uh, architecture, 
with a concrete result also in um, Lithuania. And, uh, sorry, um, Sharon, can you share the full, can you make the full screen available or visible? Oh, because okay. I have the feeling that we cannot see all the, all the slide. Mm -hmm. I will have check, check, check how to do this. Mm. <clears throat> full screen, full screen. Beautiful. It is a full screen now, Didier. I can see a full screen now. I have the feeling that I okay. Then it's uh -huh. then it's fine. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Do you see it or is it yeah? Not? Yeah, that's fine. Fine. Yeah. Thank okay. you. Then uh, what um, I think uh, we already heard about the the countries that uh, the landscape architects uh, encounter in uh, countries, and it's really important that uh, we collect uh, more problems. So uh, I fully support this uh, call for. Uh, um handing in the complaints by the national organizations um then uh what do we value we we uh, aim in the inland project uh, to to support these high standards of education in uh, landscape architecture and what we found out and we have this uh, project together working with the schools and with uh, colleagues of EFLA europe is um, that we looked into the new developments for landscape architecture, the neurosustainability goals, and um, we want to link stronger the, the role and the efforts of the profession to this uh, new demands of uh, society. And uh, what we do here is that um, this common training framework that uh, will support uh, the harmonization of education and training. And some people have a strange feeling about training, the word training in this, but actually this common training framework is a defined uh, term of the EU. So we, we need to use that to work, uh, but it relates mainly to uh, higher education. We looked into all the policies, European policies and the aims of the EU for sustainable development. And we linked this uh, to the content of the common training framework, um, not only for the physical landscape, but also uh, if we look at the landscape for the quality of uh, urban open space, the risk management and strengthening uh, climate resilience. And, um, even at the moment that uh, the common training framework is not uh, formally established by the EU, it will uh, be a new basis uh, for the recognition of programs because during the validation and during the recognition procedures, um, there is always a peer review and a, a benchmarking of uh, what kind of uh, learning outcomes and what kind of qualifications uh, does the school offer and the um, new common training framework will anyway uh, be the basis uh, for this uh, benchmarking. And um, well, in, in general, and that was earlier also mentioned, is that if it's recognized uh, by the EU, it will help with the free mobility. It will support uh, the goals of the EU for uh, the implementation of the sustainability goals and the landscape uh, policies. And it will help uh, to make sure that uh, some kind of even playing fields for uh, landscape architects uh, across uh, the EU member states. And at the moment, and that's, that's also very nice what was shown in France is that when this is established, uh, it's also easier uh, to have the discussion with the neighboring disciplines or chambers or other organizations in each uh, country. Well, the content of uh, the common training framework, uh, Fritz already explained uh, what uh, PQD is. Uh, this is the basis for it and that there are already a number of uh, regulated professions and that at this moment landscape architecture is not yet uh, uh, recognized. And what we did in the Innerland project, uh, we had a lot of discussions together with uh, the partners in the first half of um, 
2021, and we came up to a draft proposal for this common set of minimum knowledge, skills, and competences. And now I have to, this is my last slide, I think, Gintaras. Yes. Um, because just to show that, that it's not something that started new, that uh, there's already a long uh, tradition of collaboration between um, IFLA and ECLAS uh, and uh, IFLA Europe uh, in this. And um, what you can see is that, um, of course, in the general re regulations of the EU, we had the Bologna Declaration, but IFLA Europe, or former EFLA, started with this blue book on uh, the, the visions and the content and the quality of the different uh, professions. Um, there was a school recognition panel, and that's still ongoing. And there was there were efforts from IFLA Europe, I think already started in 2002 or four, to develop this common uh, education uh, platform. ECLAS worked on the basis of a tuning project to have um, defining common training, uh, common uh, learning outcomes. And uh, in 2011, there was an agreement between uh, IFLA Europe and ECLAS to have common starting points in this. Well, as uh, the time passed on, there were new regulations, new ambitions uh, by the EU. And what we try to fit in is this new common training framework is to fit in this the impact and the ideas of these uh, new uh, policies. And now I will hand over to uh, Gintaras, but maybe I'll... Do you see the full slide still, Neil? Yeah? Yes, we see okay. them. Yeah, okay. Thank you, Aaron. So we see that we are in a process of continuing the work that was started by our colleagues many years ago and then during all the time in our general assemblies and in our events at IFLA Europe and also at ECLAS events, we all the time we discussed how the profession could advance into the um, more, more sophisticated regulation and recognition. So as we see the, um, the general uh, uh, basis for the CTF for the common training framework sits on a professional um, platform on educational requirements that are monitored by ICLAS and by different activities that uh, IFLA Europe members develop. Uh, projects that were looking in detail on education, on, uh, on different other topics, and uh, in particular, in the land that looks uh, not just on developing educational outcomes, but also looks in the quality of the profession and responsibility of the professionals involved. Next, please. Uh, probably uh, now we have very good moment because the moment of doing something is also very important. Uh, in previous times when we were addressing uh, the commission and different politicians, both locally and nationally, there was always something more important. And of course, today we, we see that many things are more important in the world probably, but the moment is very good given the uh, documents and the directive that, that, that are coming from the United Nations, like the Sustainable Development Goals and also the Green Deal policy instruments that are that closely relate sustainability and funding. And at the same time, the responsibility and quality of the projects of those interventions that are done on the ground in, in our countries becomes very, very important. Next, please. When we speak about the uh, recognition and uh, common training requirements, we should also understand that we're talking about a uh, responsibility of specialists involved. So the same happened to architects, the same happened to doctors when they got automatic recognition. It's related to responsibility of professionals who are involved into the, into the activities that are giving their service. Uh, also, that might cover uh, insurance questions and some practical issues that probably today we are not thinking so much about, but these all things are doable. I would add uh, one more important thing that, uh, given the uh, context of the European Commission, uh, there, are, there are two basic criteria under which the profession has more chance to be included into the regulated profession. This is health issues, everything what is related to human health, and safety, safety and security issues. So we should have this in mind. 
And in all ways, when we are developing a common training framework, draft documents, we have this in mind. Probably we should talk more to specialists of those both fields, how we could place proper and credible arguments that our, our work uh, outputs of landscape architects work have influence both on health and on uh, human safety. Uh, as you see, we started the process, uh, the, the collaborative consultation process with Common Training Framework already a year ago. Um, we had several meetings with professionals from different countries, and that was very good for us on one hand to, to hear from uh, people what is from the professionals, what is happening in different EU countries. On the other hand, to share with them the overall concept of the Common Training Framework and some particular uh, elements like the structure of the document, which is not going to be 100 pages long document. It's going to be very short, very uh, concise, I would say, but we, we need uh, a lot of supporting documents which might find their place as appendix and be very useful during the implementation of this, of this uh, framework. Next, please. So we have seen this slide already. Uh, looking from the perspective of Lithuania, I just can add that we face certain difficulty in contact with authorities. Even we know some people who are in the government, in, in this government and in, in the previous government, uh, they uh, feel a strong, um, strong hand from architects, I would say, and they are a bit afraid to take uh, the courage and to act and to pro pr prepare some national regulation. We will try to use uh, the good experiences and good practices which we hear today and maybe we'll be more successful. Next, please. Education is uh, one important block of the CTF um, because even if we have a big variety of schools and programs, we have to settle uh, some common requirements and these requirements should be based on uh, two criteria on, on uh, modularity and exemplarity we started already discussing in our consortium of uh, innerland project how we could set these requirements for the common training framework that people could take them over and implement them and of course additional professional traineeship we have uh, different pathways how people come to the profession so we should allow for for professionals that are coming from from other sides and they have, for example, long professional practice and they come from one profession, then they go to 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 study landscape architecture and finally they achieve their their adequate professional qualification. Also continuous professional development, our seminars and our workshops that we constantly organize by IFLA Europe and by regions. Uh, for example, we know that in, in Baltic Sea region, we are organizing these training workshops, workshops with uh, five countries involved. Uh, they have big sense because uh, the professionals, when they are working, they, there are lots of uh, hot topics and hot issues arising. And it's very difficult even for a for, for, for single professional or for a single company to, to get the updates. And if as a European association uh, and a regions, groups of associations in the regions and national associations if we could contribute that to that process so it would be very useful next please so of course we know that the base of knowledge skills and competences lies in in, in good um, education this is a starting point uh, where we have a um, spe uh, specific competences of landscape planning design and management management the principles that come from european landscape convention and we also uh, could uh, could um, deliver to our students the holistic understanding of landscape like a uh, uh, part of nature and like the processes that happen in landscape and these two interdependent uh, fields are are the basis for proper education Next, please. What we are doing at InnoLand with our colleagues and our partners, um, and of course with active participation of IFLA Europe, 
um, Exco and President personally, Katerina, uh, we started already co contacts to the EU because now we are in a position when we uh, when we have full full power and full uh, basis to ask some questions and to get some responses because we are a project which is funded by the European Commission, and we hope that we will use this this authority as long as we can. There are some uh, important questions to ask and we are getting some responses. So we are running a process of soft diplomacy, I would say. And we have uh, some colleagues who are very good on doing that. Uh, in particular, I would like to mention Richard Stiles. He is very good in context to the commission, writing it in a nice language. And what, of course, what we want to ensure, we want to ensure that the commission knows what we're doing, they are informed. And uh, we want to know their specific requirements because uh, the, the directive, the wording in the directive is very diplomatic, I would say. The words are very flexible and they are, everything is very round and you can understand, they sound very nice, but it's difficult to understand what hides behind these words. So we try to go a little bit behind this uh, official curtain and to, to learn what would be those specific um, requirements once uh, if the Europe and the, the group of countries we present this draft to the commission and then they have to decide or, and respond something to us. Next, please. So as you see the, in this uh, quite complicated chart, we have drafted uh, the processes that are ongoing. And if you ask me where in which place we are now, so I think, Yaron, you are moving with your mouse right in, in a little bit left, I would say. Can you move left with your cursor? So left, left, left. Yeah, too far, too far. The, the green boxes, discussion conferences and discussion decision at ECLAS GA on the principles. Yes, we are in this process. So as you see, we are well advanced. Well, there is a question, of course, if we if we could do this in a different way, of course, there are different ways to do, but once we have now a project and we have some time dedicated by the partners, I think that's a very good, good basis for doing that because you can, sometimes it's difficult to do uh, serious things just in your free time. And this is a serious activity. It, it involves professional, some uh, technical issues, also good knowledge of legal processes. So we are in this, pro in this point now, in this phase, and I hope, um, Till the end of year, we will be able to present the final draft of common training framework to IFLA Europe uh, General Assembly in, um, in Helsinki. Next, please. So that's all from our side. And yeah, you... maybe I can add something. Yes. Because we, uh, we had this draft and it was... Uh voted on by the ECLAS General Assembly and they agreed on the principles. Uh, it was presented in the IFLA Europe um, General Assembly by Gintas. And um, you can find the paper on the research gate, but at this moment, Innoland is doing this uh, test with the national offices um, just to see whether uh, the, the proposed draft of the CTF is in line and complying with the national standards in the regulated and non-regulated countries. And based on the results of this testing, and uh, we completed it now for the partner countries, and uh, IFLA Europe very helpfully also uh, proposed maybe to, to do it in additional countries. Um, and some uh, first conclusions of this will be discussed in the Inland Partner Meeting in the coming weeks. But we found already some aspects that maybe we were a bit too detailed in the first draft proposal. So maybe we have to make things a bit more general in, in the formulation. So, so there will be an update in the draft resulting from the conclusions of this uh, testing in each country. But we will come back to you on this later. But for the meantime, the general structure and outline is still uh, well uh, valid uh, as we presented it here on the research gate. Or maybe you want to add something to this, Kintaras? 
Yes, just to add the last sentence, I think that uh, a lot of work that our associations are doing for the members in the countries is very important in this process. And as we see from this uh, pilot testing uh, uh, reports, we will present them to IFLA Europe later on in our next events. We see that many events find a proper place there, like uh, seminars, like training, like uh, taking care of education programs, like recognizing them in proper order, like fulfilling these uh, uh, ECLAS guidance requirements and many other things. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Jeroen and Gintaras for your very clear presentation. And we are looking forward to the, the final uh, results of the projects. Great. Um, now, that's good. We still have 30 minutes for questions, discussions, uh, remarks, whatever. And now the time is, uh, it's for you, for all the participants and attendees, and especially also the delegates of the national associations where the profession is still not recognized or re regulated. And um, um, opening the floor. So who would like to start and maybe the first question? Um, to all the to all the speakers, I mean, you received the perfect uh, overview of uh, all the questions related to um, recognition of the profession. So, from starting from the survey, the prof the the PQD process, the um, two success stories, and um, and finally the CTF. And Jana is would like to say something. Jana. Uh, hello, I would just li like to say that there are like, I don't know, minimum five questions in the on the chat. So maybe yeah. we should start with them. Yes, um, may maybe I was not able to sh to check all the um, all the questions. Maybe you see, I mean, one question um, for for you, <laughs> Jana, you <laughs> Your, your positive experience. So how do you feel after this, um, well, regulation? Uh, I, I, of course, it was a big relief because it's in some moments it was really frustrating. But uh, uh, as I described, uh, we are all the time somehow threatened by some, some tendencies to limit our competences. So. Uh, if the profession is listed in the European Commission's list of professions, it is not so easy. So uh, we, we feel much safer. And I think it is a, a very good also for the future landscape architects, for the students, that, that it has it's established somehow. Mm -hmm. But you choose the, the, the way of going through the, the chamber, right? Because the uh, we've been we've been members of, of the chamber for, for from the beginning, and they certified us. And we are not uh, like like uh, our NGO is not. Uh, it's only an, an an NGO, but the chamber of the architects is an official official state uh, state organization, and we pay them, and they are responsible. And they like okay. like they are our representatives. This is the deal, right? For the for the for the for the law, and they yeah. also have uh, lawyers, so um, we use them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So th there was a question also in the chat about the uh, national association with the if they are a member of the chamber, if there's an overview over there. But I think uh, Katerina, this is in your survey, right? Yes, there is um, on the pre-survey where we have the maps, we have on specific table just saying uh, in which countries are in a chamber system and not. And I believe there they're also related to architects. If they are not, uh, please read it because I cannot remember the, the amount of the countries that the chamber system or related to the architect's chamber. Uh, if the people that want more, uh, Answers, I have to look thoroughly on the answers of each country so I can give more details. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Do we have more questions uh, um, from the national, from the delegates? Are there questions? I mean, um, Indra, yes, Indra, please. 
Yes, hello everyone. It's really great to have this uh, and to be. Thank you for organizing this event. Uh, You're so welcome. It's a really a great initiative. But um, I would say uh, ambitious and plans for the next period because if we want to have recognition for future professions, I'll try to remember who in who, who presentation, in Katerina, in your presentation, this was that. Uh, uh, we need uh, to answer the questions uh, regarding this new directive, why landscape architects should be regulated. And uh, I think this is quite a big task. And in this large group, I would like to open the question because uh, from uh, there is a two lines. One line is to have uh, what Fritz presented, this uh, automatic recognition, but another line is to do national uh, uh, recognition. And uh, for these national ones, we all who want to apply need to uh, uh, submit this uh, questionnaire. So I'm opening in this broad audience uh, an, a topic that we need to establish working group. Maybe this is the beginning of that, who will set up uh, key uh, key teams, key topics, as Gintaras mentioned, health, security, uh, climate, uh, biodiversity, and so on, on which are and why landscape architects should be part of uh, regulated professions. And that's uh, my uh, suggestion. Uh, and uh, as Latvia is uh, in a drafting stage already, and Architects uh, Council and Ministry of Culture agreed that uh, Latvia is in the law. The law is already in a drafting uh, stage. But most uh, other ministries already accepted landscape architects to be, uh, we are going a chamber format. Uh, that was suggestion from uh, architects. They are also do moving to the chamber system and uh, we were very welcomed and they are happy to have us. We actually have more discussion with engineers, uh, with road engineers, less with architects at this moment. So uh, we need to lobby in that direction, but we need this uh, document. And uh, I would uh, ask is anyone, any, any other country who is in this process, in this stage already, who urgently need it, as we need, uh, who could uh, come together and start to, to build it. Thank you, Ingrid. I will come back to you. I will come back to you, to your proposal later on with the proposal of the working group. I think Katerina would like to say something, and I have after that. I have uh, Anne Woods. Yes. Thank you very much, Indra. First of all, because she has pointed a lot of uh, subject that we've been discussing uh, all this time, and. Uh, one of the point, as DJ is going to say, basically today workshop is really to sensitize all of you to, uh, to create a very active uh, new working group on professional uh, practice. And some um, questions probably is for Indra, but for Jana, um, because this is changing among countries. What are the requirements in your countries for our landscape architects to be in a chamber where our architects or civil engineers? And the requirements that I'm talking are basically on the educational standards. Do they have to be, for example, engineers, landscape architects, engineers? Do they have to be, you know, how I'm talking to? Uh, do they have to be in the architectural school and have Department of Landscape Architecture in order to be registered in a chamber like that? This, uh, this is my question because there are other countries that cannot be registered in a chamber of architects because of these issues. So I will start with this question and later <laughs> on I will catch up with the other issue that Indra, of course, was mentioning and I found very useful. Thank you, Katarina. But um, uh, the, the question is for. Please, the question, who would like to, or is it simply a- oh, For Indra out? and Jana, and if you, uh, because they have- I don't know, maybe. And, uh, yes. yes. We can do the tour de table on this question because I yes. think Katerina need to do the survey <laughs> points. But uh, in Latvia, um, <laughs> it was like a gentleman um, agreement, I would say, that they respect us and we respect them. They have education in landscape architecture, 
Uh, we have also my colleagues are here. I'm trying to remember from 1994, I believe so. So we have uh, five year studies historically. Now they're turning to different system, but the same. So we will keep, the, we are quite similar systems for as architects and as landscape architects. So, but schools are totally different in even in different cities, <laughs> but uh, we respect each other. Yes, it took time to achieve uh, this uh, mutual respect, but yeah, that's in Latvia. Okay, thank you. Um, maybe Anne, you, ha you have a question? Anne? Yes, I, I had a question because I, I was very uh, pleased with the presentations I've seen today, which were like real uh, eye openers to me, um, not um, only what was told, but the way it was presented. Some of the pictures were terribly clear <laughs> and I would like to use them talking to Belgian politicians um, because like you can see Belgium always as a little spot into Europe with the other color. And it's like a little bit of a problem for us landscape architects. And it, maybe it could help us to get forward with the recognition of the title and so on. So I would like to use, of course, I will tell where the slides come from. I would like to use the slides or some of the slides to do a, a presentation in my uh, first step as a, a, a delegate for the uh, Belgian association. So this is a question, can I use <laughs> the beautiful pictures I've seen today? I think there is no restriction, right? No, please. I mean, I every so. every document you need, please, we can send it or you, you, we are happy to to help uh, you in and to help Belgium in to, to, to okay. get the profession regulated. Thank you. Great. Thank you. <laughs> so all the presentation will be available to everyone. Okay. Uh, there is a from Katinka. There is a question. Katinka. And then we have Jana after that. Katinka, if not, um, then uh, Jana, you want to say something because Katinka, you have your I'm hand. Yeah, yeah. I, Katinka I, I, needs to unmute as well. So. Ah, okay. Yeah, it's on mute, so that's why we don't yeah. hear. Okay. okay. Hello. Yes, yes, please. Uh, I belong to a country where uh, landscape architecture and landscape architect is not a uh, regulated profession. And uh, um, I have uh, asked, I have uh, answered some questions in the survey uh, that uh, uh, Ministry of Education uh, um, uh, were done some contacts and uh, they uh, uh, they want uh, university who where landscape architects are educated to to apply for that uh, recognition. Uh, they are slowly uh, doing the, the work. Uh, um, what else? Uh, uh, um, my question, one of my questions, uh, who is the leader of the process in some successful countries in that uh, ah. subject, national association or universities, or how do you manage together? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Good question, Katinka. Maybe Jana, because Jana would like to say something. You can answer um, the question. I just, I just wanted to make a note that, that I'm surprised that Anne said that the uh, situation in Belgium is not uh, the best because I was all the time thinking that landscape architecture in Belgium is quite developed and so on. So good luck. But uh, the lead, the leader of the process. I come from Bulgaria. If you if you mean story. my question, I can yeah, I just uh, I just wanted uh -huh. to say that the leader uh -huh. of the process in our country was our association because. The university don't care, uh, didn't care. Uh, universities didn't care, and the chamber didn't care as well because they are ninety-five percent of the architects who are happy with their situations and situation, and five uh, uh, architects, five percent of landscape architects were not strong enough. So we we needed to came come with the strong impulse, kicked by IFLA, 
and I must say that Eva Yenikova, my my uh, my delegate who 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 run mostly the process was very very strong and so on so uh if you want to change the situation just go and do it because nobody will do it instead of you <laughs> this is a clear message you know fantastic <laughs> yeah. Yeah. i have uh, i have margarita margarita you would like to say something and then we ha i have uh, elena margarita please you can have elena you can have elena first ah elena elena first please elena um Yes, yes, it's good. Oh, hi, everybody. Thank you very much. My question goes to Fritz, uh, well, probably. Um, I didn't understand clearly, Fritz, the uh, common training framework that is the um, network of the um, uh, landscape architects community which uh, fulfill these seven or how much this uh, this point or is this, uh, there are it is uh, the um, set of uh, events which are happening centralized what about well i i, I don't understand you um, completely but uh, the common training framework uh, is like what is it? Uh, like uh, gintara's set uh, it, it, it's a, it's a set of knowledge, skills, and competences, and this is one point which has to be fulfilled. Uh, but uh, now, uh, Gintaras and Gerion are leading the, to uh, set up on the documents which are already long time there over the last two, ten years to bring it together to a document where all competences, skills, uh, and knowledge for landscape architects are in one document. Okay. Uh, please, is... uh, Jerry, on, uh, you can, uh, or Quintaras, you can um, yeah. say also something. If you, if you look on this paper in the search gate, there is a proposed draft, so you can see the outline. What is the content of the framework? So. I could type the link maybe here in the chat. Mm. So that, is the, uh, that is the document, no? Yeah. yeah. Okay. That is the document that what if you are say, uh, saying the common training framework, that is one document. Yeah, it is okay. document approved by the European Commission. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Thank you. That, that was my question. What is it physically? <laughs> And the conditions, which are uh, the seven conditions, yeah, yeah seven one, conditions. One is yeah. Condi condition yeah. are, is the contents, and the others are frame conditions which have to be fulfilled. That mm -hmm. the CTF is accepted. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. That is one of the steps. Is uh, so more countries with regulation? Is there, they were profession. More countries were professions regulated. So that is one one way to get there? No, it has nothing to do with the CTF, but uh, besides, as others said it already, it, it is very helpful if we uh, get in success, like Indra says, a working group to set up uh, those countries where the regulation is not done because it has to be done on national level. And it would be fine if we are getting more more than now. Mm -hmm. Yes, correct. Clear, Elena? Yes. Good. Margarita, please. Uh, I have two different issues. The first one is Portugal. It's very strange because the Minister of the Environment and Planning um, launched laws that recognize the landscape architects to be part of the planning uh, plans, uh, rural plans, uh, detailed plans and the urban plans and so on. But we are not recognized. We have a fight of 20, more than 20 years. And I think like Gintaras told us, our main problem is with architects because they don't accept our uh, specific competences. Uh, they, they are so proposed and uh, they don't accept. 
we tried to, to go inside the chamber of architects and our law, lawyer advised that they must change the name. We cannot be there in a chamber of only architects. They must broad the name of the chamber. So this is the, the Portuguese fight. Uh, okay, the, the other issue is related to uh, education at Tiflo Europe. Uh, I think the content of the education, the, the, the disciplines, we have a, a broad agreement uh, between the IFLA recognition documents, the CTF, the Inland uh, work grow, going on, we have an agreement. I'm not sure that we have a, a full agreement about uh, uh, what I believe. To be recognized, I believe we must be similar to the other professions that are recognized at the European level. I believe we need a master's level as in all and uh, uh, defense also, uh, but I, I think we need five years in landscape architecture. We cannot accept anymore uh, people coming with three years in architecture or in geography. Uh, I believe that I, I know that the architects at the European level don't accept people coming with three years in design or some uh, related uh, profession. Uh, so uh, I need, we must go in this direction, the five years, the master level, and uh, I'm not so sure that uh, we have disagreement uh, among if the Europe national associations and schools, I'm not so sure. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Margarita. Um, interesting, yes. Um, I have Fritz and then I have Michael. Yes, uh, I only want to, to answer to Margarita. Uh, so in Germany, we have also the name of the chamber is architects, but uh, architects are landscape architects, building architects, uh, urban planners, interior architects. So it's, it's a, a head, head uh, term. So uh, perhaps uh, it could be helpful to, to, to use uh, the German chamber because they have all uh, uh, the questions you raised, uh, they have all solved it. Yes? Uh, so uh, the architects accept the landscape architects. Also, we are not so much, yes, uh, but uh, perhaps uh, it could be helpful to use uh, the connection to the German chamber, I don't know. So the chamber solution, thank you, Fritz. Um, Michael. Can hello, you, can, yes, yeah, can you hear me? very good. Yeah, yeah very yeah. nice. Yeah, hello everyone, good, good afternoon. And thank you very much uh, for having me here. Um, and obviously thank you very much for brilliant presentations, very inspiring. Um, it seems that there's still much to do in Poland. So um, I, yes, I represent the, um, co-represent the Polish um, Landscape Architects um, Association. And um, I think I have a few observations here, maybe followed by a few questions. So. First thing that I see is, and I think this this makes maybe the asking actually or formulating the questions pretty difficult because of all of our countries, we have our own legislation, legislative legislative frameworks. You know, the, obviously there is a political will will behind it as well, which may be different in different countries. You know, there is different kind of pressure on uh, maybe on sustainability, maybe on climate change, and everything that probably our profession kind of is touching. So um, my I think my questions would be. To, to, um, to the presenters, you know, to, to, Czech, to Czech Republic, to France, and to others you know, who actually succeeded in making the, the profession um, recognize, you know, what arguments actually you used when discussing with your um, I know, regulatory bodies, for example, with politicians, with your ministries, with your representatives, um, what made your efforts effective in, in the end? You know, was that really actually the, this, this political will? Was this um, the actually, um, I don't know, um, the willingness to, to do something about it. Um, and also, um, what op obstacles did you, did you um, encounter when, mm. when trying, you know, when, when, <clears throat> when allowing to, to, to get to your, to your goal? I don't know, Jana or um, Nicola, if you have uh, two seconds to answer the, <laughs> this long question. 
or or you have uh, two words. Jana, are you still there? Or Nicola? No. Yeah. Yes, Nicola. Uh, uh, for, for the arguments, uh, it's between uh, the um, landscape architect and uh, architects about uh, the environment uh, uh, for the biodiversity. Uh, and we, we use the, the law of the biodiversity and uh, for um, to, to have a more impact with uh, actual question uh, mm -hmm. with the Ministry of Environment. That it's a big, big difference between uh, the architect and us. And I think it's uh, a question that it's really important of uh, people now. And it's a good, uh, good argument to, to, to put on the ministry table to, to discuss. Mm -hmm. Very good, Nicola. Thank you very yeah. much. And I think this is related also to the question of the Green Deal, the European Green Deal, and that the mm -hmm. landscape architects are also playing a very important, a key role in the implementation, for example, of nature-based solutions and all these uh, other um, measures. Um, I would, I, it's already five, so we, we still, um, we are now at the end of our session. I have two points for all of you. What do you think if we do another webinar, maybe in uh, May, and uh, with uh, two other success stories? And then we are simply sharing these, uh, the ideas and then progressing. And also I saw in the chat the motivation from Bernadette because uh, the Irish National Association is also on the way of regulating the profession. And maybe we can also support the Irish um, profession or Irish uh, association. So uh, this is the first point to have another webinar and then sharing the experience and having this uh, discussion. And uh, another point is mentioned by Katerina before that we would like to have and to start a new working group on the landscape profession. Landscape Architecture Profession Working Group is, uh, we can start from now on and say, we are welcoming all you, all of you national delegates work on this issue, sharing this knowledge, sharing the, the results of the CTF, share the, the other results, sharing the contacts with the European Commission, etc., and progressing on this topic because it's uh, quite crucial would say. And this is exactly mentioned before. This is the moment now. We are in the process of the Green Deal. We are implement, we have to implement the uh, low carbon policies. We have to implement all this stuff. We are facing big challenges connected to IPCC and all this stuff. You know all these stories. So our profession is key and this is the moment to, to become more active there. If you are ready to jump in, um, write to the name in the chat or uh, contact Daniela. She will be happy to, to, um, to collect all the names and then we start the work of the working group as soon as possible. Katerina is there. Dear president, please. <laughs> Thank you, Didier. Uh, something that I wanted to also to, to add that at this point, we have started to be in slowly, but I believe is going to be more progressively uh, in contact with also some members of the European Parliament because they have started sending to us for uh, documents, draft documents they're composing. Uh, so they asked, it's very nice that they have been asking us even to comment on that or to uh, give more feedback. So I believe that this working group, as I said in my presentation, can be started, of course, working in a very uh, simple phase, but in during the, the way can be really assisting on these issues because, you know, who don't know too much, we just uh, practitioners or academia as you are. So basically, uh, it would be very, very helpful to have people that 
they are coming from different backgrounds and they contribute on that. So from my part, I, I would like really to thank you all of you today. I think it was a very successful uh, workshop and uh, we have at least put the basis for several discussion. And this is, I believe it's basically networking and exchanging experience among each other that is going to be very helpful for, for us because the European Commission, I think uh, your own mentioned or Jintaras, really they use the soft diplomacy. And sometimes when you are talking with them, you are thinking that should I be a lawyer first in first being landscape architect? So the urges really every time that the question would have been difficult to go back to our national association, national uh, anyway country. So I believe that it should start from us. And of course, if Europe can really help on the European level as much as it can, but each one of us can really make the difference. So thank you very much. Thank you, Katerina. And uh, I, this is a nice sentence written by Nicola. Let's pull the rope together. <laughs> this is exactly, this is what we would like to do. Huh? <laughs> uh, somebody would like to say something? Another? Indra? Yes, please, Indra. Uh, as I found, found pointed out already, uh, we need the points for survey on this directive as this new one. So I'm looking maybe Irish also would need it. Uh, research Association or who is uh, in this final stage? Because if I feel that if we will come slowly together and start to build up, uh, then uh, I think we as from Latvia need to do it alone. So it will not be exactly the situation that we can achieve some no, results and some support. Indra, you can also refer to success stories of other countries, of course. Uh, Didier, it's not the question I'm asking. Ah, okay. We need very yes. precise answers, mm -hmm. uh, specifically written in directive. And we need to give why landscape architects in Latvia should be recognized. And there are very precise points and we need to have these answers. Okay. It would be good to have them Europe level answers, not Latvian ones. <laughs> That's okay. my point. So That's maybe fine. there should be sub subgroup. <laughs> okay. I think Jana wanted to say something or not? Oh, I just yes. I just wanted to apologize for not replying the uh, the the question from Michal that uh, what what arguments did we use to be regulated? But uh, <clears throat> we didn't need to uh, to. Uh, to insist on regulation because from the beginning sorry <laughs> from the beginning of the of the chamber of the architects we were members so we were regulated but the more crazy it was to insist on the process to be registered in europe because we were regulated by quite difficult under quite difficult conditions like the architects and it was quite difficult to push the lazy ministry to do the process mm -hmm. okay yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Jana. And thank so, you very much for organizing that. It's no, that's, uh, you're welcome. Work. This is, um, uh, so I would like to close this um, meeting or this session and um, be sure that we are going to organize another one, right? But um, for the next, uh, you will receive an email from the Secretariat with the, the link to the presentations and the, and the chat, and also the invitation to join this new working group and uh, we are counting on your support and your involvement in making this working group a success. So um, I don't know, Katerina, maybe you, as a president, you may close this event, but um, thank you for all for attending. <laughs> thank you, Didier, I have already said, and I really believe with what Indra was saying, and please I urge, all of you that probably you are in the same situation as Indra or the Latvia Association it is now to join and to join this group and probably this can be really a topic to be discussed first and uh, start working with this because we have too many topics okay raised here today and I think uh, I cannot really uh, uh, had, imagine from the survey in which situation are where other countries or so Indra can 
give you now the names of the countries that probably are on the same stage as you are, but uh, really the delegates, they know more and uh, it could be really useful if people can really join us, but we're here anyway to work with you only in draft if nobody anyway appears <laughs> because for us, uh, it's really very important. And each one of you, each one case study. For me, just reading the case of all of Europe, it really, it was a great lesson. Uh, so anyway. Okay. Thank you, Katarina. Thank you very much. Thank you Thank all. You all. So Thank you will receive all these information with the presentations. Have a good evening. Thank you. See you next Hello. time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.